Hello, folks, and welcome back to the third and final part of your introduction to histology, where I will be discussing muscle and nerve tissue. First, let's look at muscle tissue. Muscle tissue comes in three different types, and they are distinctive in both their structure and as well their function. All muscle is primarily used for movement. First, we'll look at skeletal muscle. It's at attached to and moves the skeleton. And that's where it gets its name. Next is cardiac muscle. This is muscle of the heart only. And then finally, smooth muscle. This is the muscle of the digestive system and arteries. All muscle is extremely vascular, meaning that it has lots of blood vessels running through it. Let's take a look at a micrograph of skeletal muscle. Here you see in skeletal muscle a long cell and you're only looking at a portion of the cell. Here's another one down here and another one above it. Skeletal muscle cells are so long and thin that in a micrograph here we're looking at about 600 times the actual size. You're only looking at a small portion of it. Another name for a skeletal muscle cell is a muscle fiber because of their long thin structure. The light and dark banding patterns are due to the overlapping contractile proteins called actin and myosin. We'll learn more about those when we study the, the muscular system later. You'll also see these darker structures along the sides of the fibers called nuclei. Skeletal muscle fibers are multinucleated and that's a unique property of skeletal muscle cells. Skeletal muscle cells are primarily voluntary that is, you have conscious control of these muscles. And if you see a diagram of the muscles of the body, you're looking at skeletal muscles. Next is cardiac muscle, structurally unique from any of the other muscles and found only in the heart. Diagram one is pointing to the nucleus of one particular cardiac muscle fiber. Pointer number two is pointing to the divisions between neighboring muscle cells. These divisions are made up of proteins and are called intercalated discs. More about these when we study the heart. And the last type of muscle is called smooth muscle. On the right hand half of your screen you're looking at a longitudinal section of these muscle fibers. The dark purple are the nuclei and then the cells run along each other. On the left hand side of your screen you see the cross section through the same type of muscle tissue. Smooth muscle is found along your entire digestive system from your esophagus, your stomach, and your intestine. You will also find smooth muscle in the walls of arteries. Here in the diagram of the stomach you'll see that it's actually made up of three different layers of smooth muscle which allow it to contort and move in different directions to help digest your food. Smooth muscle is involuntary, that is you do not have conscious control over it. And I should have mentioned, cardiac muscle is also involuntary. And the final tissue that we need to look at here is nervous tissue, or nerve tissue. Certainly found in the brain, the spinal cord, but also runs extensively throughout the body in your nerves. The arrow is pointing to a large nerve cell called a neuron, and these are the functional units of the nervous system. They are the ones that transmit messages throughout the body. The smaller dots around the neuron are support cells called neuroglial cells. These are also considered nerve tissue cells. And there are lots of different kinds of neuros, neuroglial cells. And that brings us to the end of our introduction to histology, muscle and nervous tissue. We'll spend a good amount of time in class looking at these tissues under the microscope, becoming familiar with them, and learning how to identify them. If you have any questions, certainly bring them to class, and we'll, we'll discuss them. See you then.